What is up everyone, JD here. Hope you're all doing well today. Today we're gonna to be doing a little bit of knife mod or just mods in general on EDC gear. There's a couple things that I wanted to work on. Um, first, I recently did this anno job on the side click bolt action pin or side click pin from Tactile Knife Company and it came out pretty good. But I was having a little bit of trouble with the anno on the actual body of this and I had polished up the cone and when I stripped to redo this I polished it by hand and I used an actual rotary tool to polish the tip so it looks a little bit different so one of the things I'm going to be doing today is taking a little bit of winks to strap this or strip this and then what I'll be doing is just another hand polish to kind of match up the finish so that when the anno comes up it's not quite so shiny as it is with the rotary tool and I'll be removing the button on here the titanium button to go ahead and bronze anodize that to kind of match that all up. I think it'll look really good. So we'll be doing that today. And then the other thing that I wanted to do today is I wanted to go ahead and change a little bit up on my Tucson. So first thing, the anno collar or titanium collar anno is a little bit darker on this side than it is on this side. So I'm going to, when I'm doing the bronze here, I'm going to try to stick that in there a little bit longer and darken it up to kind of match what you see here with the bolts. So it's just going to be a little bit darker. And then what I kind of want to do, I had this kind of faded, but what I want to do now is I'm going to strip this. I'm going to hand polish it to the same temperature or colorway that I have on the pin here and then I'm going to do this a solid color and then what I'd like to do is try to go around the edge here a little bit to strip it back and it'll kind of you know it won't be an even plied texture it'll kind of be uneven clean that off and then do like a worn edge so you see here how it's really blue and then on the corners hopefully in the cameras picking that up it's kind of purple so that's kind of what I'm hoping to do with this one today so I'm gonna go ahead and just cut away to having this all broken apart and then we'll move over to the wings all right for the sake of time I have disassembled everything and just to recap I'm not going to be doing anything with the body here I really like that I'm going to be taking the winks and stripping that away to dull it back down we're going to be taking the winks to the handles oh i forgot to take and i think this is a t8 as well oh, no t6 i'm going to be while i'm pulling out the right bit taking the winks to the handles of the two sun and the pocket clip and then I will be hand polishing that up. And for that hand polish, all I'm using is just a little Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish. It does a good job polishing the material and making sure like any of the winks that's left. And I'll walk you through the process. I, I hit it with some rubbing alcohol after I soak it in water to get this winks to stop and dull it down and then the alcohol to clean it off. And then the Mother's to get a fresh layer of metal so that I'm able to work with it. And that is exactly what I did with this pen and how I got it to come out looking so good. So let's go ahead and, whoops, really quickly. Sorry, with the gloves. Oh yeah, and make sure you're using personal protection to protect yourself with these chemicals. You wanna make sure that you're not getting them on yourself. So let me go ahead and get all the steel components out of here because that is going to impact how everything comes out in the anodized bath. You don't want any steel in there because it's going to affect it. And again, you just want to make sure, and I normally do this over my mat, but I would recommend working on a placemat because that'll really make sure that any steel parts that you have do not affect the outcome. Any winks on any of the steel. So just make sure you check everything all your steels removed and all that you're left with is the titanium parts all right be right back okay so now we're over here i apologize for the mess i have like a really limited area to work in because i share it with like my mechanic tools and bike tools and everything so apologies for the way that the bench looks i am storing my winks in a uh, sterile plastic bottle 
like what you would drink water out of just to make sure that the winks never gets contaminated i have my solution or just sink water not solution i have my sink water here ready to stop the anodizing and then everything is going to be going on to this mat once i pull it out of the water so i'm going to dip it in so that you can kind of see it or these are all the parts here that we're going to be working on that we're going to want to remove the anno off of so let me bring everything over here so i can do it in concession um, I'll do a slow time lapse so that you can kind of see what it looks like, but I'm going to go ahead and dip this first. And that should not take but just a few seconds in the bath to kind of clean. Let me dip it in the water, and hopefully that's giving you a really good idea of what that is going to look like so you see just a few seconds in there dipping in the water and then as long as it looks good to you you should be good to go and then the same thing with all your parts so i'm gonna time lapse the rest and then slow it down when we're done with these Um, just in case anyone is wondering, I use the Grease Monkey off Amazon. I have found that these gloves work best for me. I've tried a couple of different brands, and unfortunately, as I reposition y'all, um, not all of them work as good. I have found that the Grease Monkey works best. All right, with everything out, everything has been diluted in water. What we're going to be doing now, I'm just going to dry them a little bit, hit them with a little bit of rubbing alcohol to make sure that I've gotten everything completely clean. And once I've done that, I'm just going to hand rub everything I found that I actually like that and it works best for me. But if you found or have done something that you think works better, let me know. Also, that Winx is potentially very damaging to the materials that I'm using, which is why I only put them in there for like 10 to 12 seconds to just strip exactly what I need and in hopes that it doesn't damage any of the metals. But be forewarned, if you're using the Winx, you run into that potential that it could damage the material i have spoken with uh jd goes by jay dizzle over on instagram and he highly recommends and has used at high frequency it sounds like multi-etch and i probably will be converting to that because i don't want to damage my products i really want to take the best care that i can of everything that I'm using. So today, what I'm gonna be doing first is I'm going to just finish up the nose or cone for the pin because I already have that programmed into my power supply. So let me clean that. And uh, once everything's prepped, we'll move everything over to the anodizing station. <laughs> station like it's official. Um, anodizing station. So I'm going to just time lapse. I'm not going to talk through all this. All of this, I'm just going to time lapse. What I'll be doing is cleaning all these with rubbing alcohol to make sure that I have no winks left over to counteract the anodizing that I'm going to be doing. So just be very thorough with that and very generous with your, your alcohol or cleaning solution if you want to use Mr. Green. Um, either one of those work for me. And then polish everything up to your liking or leave it uh, dull if you like the dull look. And then I'll explain and walk through what I'm going to be doing at the anodizing station. So let me go ahead. This looks pretty good. feels good. 
doing the pin parts first and then I'll do the knife parts. So I'm gonna time lapse it. All right, I just want to pause really quick. I'm hoping you can tell I've got it by hand rubbing to a more satiny finish versus the dull finish before it comes out with the winks. And then what I'm doing is I'm trying to make sure that it's even all the way across because if you have any blemishes, if you're doing an anno with any type of light color work, or probably any color work, it's really going to show through. So that's really what I'm working on now is just trying to get it evened out and making sure that, you know, nothing is really showing up. <clears throat> Nothing's really going to show up after the anno. I just want it to look good. And um, I'm OCD, so I know. I start with a terry cloth too because it's a little more abrasive. So it's going to, you know, it's going to get down into the metal pretty good. But I just want to make sure, like on this tail right here, it's got a few little marks, but I think it looks okay. So hopefully you can see the difference on the two scales now that I've paused to, to do that. So I saved this one for last because this one's a bit of a pain in the ass because it has the lock bar. So I have to do smaller amounts and do it in smaller sections. But I did find out a trick on how to clean that. And I'll share that with you in a moment. Let's go ahead and get to work. All right, so the super secret trick I have found is washing it around in water. That actually seems to dilute the polish to the point where it just kind of runs off of it. <laughs> I know you're probably hoping for something a little bit more ingenious than that, but in all honesty, I have found that's what really works. And these shops towels are really good for cleaning up stubborn fluids i have found like paper towel is really awesome at absorbing the loose waters after you do that okay for the sake of time um, i'm going to refer you to any of my other anodizing videos and the supplies and everything for those will be in those videos this again is just specific to these two um, items that i'm anodizing today so if you're familiar with how to anodize, then you already know. 
because I did the rest of the pin at 24 volts, that is what we're going to be doing for the nose. And then we're going to turn it up to 26 for the two sun for the scales. And then the push button on the pin for the side click and the top click, we're going to drop it back down to nine volts. And we're also going to do the pocket clip and nine volts for the pin. Um, along with those collars, which I do need to clean. I need to clean those collars, I didn't do that. And then I'll show you all the results, we'll get back to the table, but I'll, I'll time lapse this so you can kind of see it. Okay, so hopefully the time lapse and everything worked for you guys today since again, this was more of a touch up job. So a couple things that I tried a little bit differently. I, um, I decided to lower the voltage for the bronze hardware and I upped it for the scales on the Tucson to try to get it a little bit brighter. I wanted it somewhere in between the Demco and my bug out. So I put it at 26 in between the 32 and 24 that I've kind of been running on some of my blue stuff. So I'm going to bring it out here. Hopefully you guys think it came out as good as I think it kind of did. So here is the Tucson in the new color. And apologies because my hands are a little <laughs> greasy, dirty from cleaning everything up so let me know what you think i um i darkened up the collar a little bit i wish it had titanium hardware i think that really would have made it pop and sing and then i decided to bronze the pocket clip instead this time so that is the tucson and how that came out if you like that give me a like i went ahead and finished up my tactile turn side click pin and here is that one so 
it still has a little bit of reflectivity in the um and again it has my fingerprints all over it sorry in the cone but i think it's a little bit more clean in the lines and then like i said i did the click button and the clicker itself to match the bronze hardware so i think that came out really good you guys can obviously tell that i like myself some blue um, but let me know what you think in the comments down below do you like the colorways did you like it better on the blurple um, i know this time i did not get to the edging yet i want to actually save that for the weekend so that'll be phase two of the t-sun the two sun where i'm going to try to go along the edges and strip it away and then come back and do like a little bit of that bronze fade on there that I've seen some other folks do. So I'd really like to try that. I think for me, I like the deeper, more vibrant blue. So around that 24, 25, 26 mark, I think I like that. I think this was 26 actually, this is 26. I like this a little bit better than the 32. You still get a little purple in there, but not too much, a little purple hues. This one definitely has more purple in it, giving it like that blurple look. Really like that with the bronze. I think that looks good. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I'd really appreciate the input and feedback on what you all think. I will try other colors in the future. That's why I bought some of those uh, more affordable EDC items to try those other colors and combinations as well. These I really use a lot and enjoy a lot, so I kind of wanted to do them in colors that I liked, but I promise I'm going to try other ones. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor, leave that like, consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed, and don't forget to turn those notification bells to all so you don't miss alerts when future videos drop. I hope each and every one of you have a fantastic week. And until next time, peace.